subscribe, damn it. And I don't necessarily mean to my channel. There's a whole bunch of other channels out there that are completely awesome that don't have a lot of subscribers to it. And I don't know when it became uncool to hit that subscribe button. I don't know if it was because of the advent of YouTube's like homepage for you, the home screen, where it shows you a lot of content that you resonate with. You click on it, you like it. So you think that YouTube is doing a good job that way. But that is the slow death of the content that you want to see and is the advent of YouTube showing you more content that they think you want to see. Now put away those conspiracy hats. I'm not trying to go down that rabbit hole or anything like that. but I probably wouldn't have found many of these content creators out there if I wasn't doing a deep dive myself of starting my own channel. So I'm gonna highlight a lot of those just to kind of showcase that point. Also, towards the end, there's some myths that really have to be debunked. If you wanna keep on seeing good content on YouTube channels, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. I would like also to say too, that this is my own opinion and this is not any opinion of any of these content creators that I am pointing out. They're just people that I like. And if you don't agree with what I'm saying, please don't take it out on them. This is just me saying that. So I refer to this as the factor of 10. And I think I heard it somewhere on one of the podcasts for YouTube creators that possibly there's only about 10% of the viewing audience actually subscribes. So really, they should have almost 10 times the amount of subscribers when you look at their subscription count. But they think because YouTube is pushing it to them that, hey, I don't need to subscribe. And this is proven to be true because I've been in many forums or live streams where I see people saying, YouTube does a good job of pushing content to me that I don't subscribe to that, that person. But you're actually really only hurting that channel and future growth of small YouTubers like myself but some of these that I'm about to highlight. One of them that blows my mind is Average Joe's. This guy is completely awesome. He's been in the game for about four years now and he does great reviews. They look like, you know, just like that person that's giving me that fatherly advice, you know, like learn from my mistakes, go don't go down this road. And they're brief to the point. He gives you great deals on, you know, whenever you can find them at Adorama or uh, music Musician's Friend. And it, it's a really great channel. He is like almost like the antithesis of what that factor of 10 should be. And he doesn't have flashy thumbnails or anything like that. And it just looks like, you know, a regular guy, an average Joe, trying to get information to those average Joes or Jones out there. Now, Trey Shreddings is a remarkable person. He's actually pretty new to the YouTube uh, circuit. You may have seen him on Scar My Guitar before, but still, no matter what, he's only been in the game for about six months, but to only have less than 1,500 subscribers, that is absolutely mind-blowing. This guy, he is just a, a musical genius, and he is, you know, he's just a, a, a great character, a great person that you want to bond with, and it just... It blows my mind. He is well beyond. He should be past that that factor of 10. Jace Allen is another content creator, just like the average Joes, where it's not really flashy, but gives you that great advice. And he has that musician background to even further his, you know, credibility. And if you take a look, he has also just basically started this year too, but he's improving his backdrop, his studio type look. So he's trying to make it more appealing to the viewer themselves. And he is, he's probably, he should be at least 10,000 10, subscribers deep already from the content that he's putting out there. Now, Steve Cassidy is somebody from across the pond for us US folks over there here, that is someone that actually totally debunks that factor of 10. He should be beyond that already. I think he only has at the time of this showing maybe 30, less than 3,500 subscribers, and he should already be 50,000 deep. 
And I know you're thinking probably like realist, un unrealistic, but this is because you might not be finding these people on YouTube or you may have seen like one thumbnail that you didn't like and you didn't click on it. But meanwhile, you know, if the people that actually were viewing him were subscribing, that subscriber count would go up and you would have more, you know, think that he's a more credible person. But let me tell you, his playing ability is awesome. His different colorization to his videos are great. And the live streams are so much fun to tune into. And it's just a good little banter back and forth. And he is building a great community. You definitely want to check him out. Budget Guitar Show is another great one. It's across the pond also. But if you couldn't tell from the gentleman's accent. But he has a nice little catchy little like intro. It's kind of like a punk rock Sex Pistols type thing. And it's pretty cool to kind of like, kind of see a little intro like that. But his live streams also are a great time too. And definitely somebody that is totally that factor of 10. Fretboard Diaries. I tell you, been in the game for about three years. So probably late to that game of the, the subscriber is cool count and you know is really battling out there and it shows because he has a good subscriber right. But man, he he's, should be another 50K subscribe person already. He's changing currently changing up his uh, format as far as his uh, uh, studio look and everything, but he already had a great look already and good character on, on screen, great playing ability. And definitely, you know, has a good target audience for us people out there. So, again, it's these things might not be there because you're not seeing them on your homepage. But don't rely on your homepage. Start doing deep dives into this stuff. <laughs> the Ball Shredder. Now, I'm a little bit of a late comer to this channel, but he is incredible. And you may look at his channel and this channel and see we might have that same panache for... Uh, a little bit of uh, theatrics and he kind of was probably more closer towards that it's still kind of cool to subscribe and like phasing out because again he's he's somebody that should be i think go check it out i think he's at twenty five thousand ish and he should already be past a hundred thousand it just uh his live his live streams when he's they're just so much fun and again, he provides great content. Check him out. Now, someone who does not need probably any help from, from me, I'm just blown away how he has not blown up as good as he, I mean, he's got 92,000 subscribers, but he really should be probably in, you know, a quarter of a million already. And that's uh, Landon Bailey. He's been in definitely probably where it bridges that period of, cool to subscribe and not subscribe but his sometimes he's got such a dry wit and sometimes the comedy just like smacks you right in the face it is just funny to listen to him on some of his videos and one of them in particular that i love is where he does like a top five guitar and he goes in no particular order but then he starts with like the third guitar he goes then he goes number five and then he goes number four number one and lastly number two like, again i probably never would have came across him months ago if it wasn't from doing a little bit of a dive into trying to find topics see what works and see what doesn't work i mean there, there's there's so many other channels out there that i that i could cover you know like rj's cave telecaster guy jimmy stewart um Man, Chuck's Guitar Geekery, there's uh, Chicken Jam, it's about a year old. They do great content and also uh, the Lick Learning and things like that. And uh, even uh, Danny Underwood. So go check these guys out and leave a comment down below, you know, about other content creators. Um, all these ones that I just mentioned before, uh, will be probably highlighted in future videos. If you haven't seen, I've done some major players in the game, but we're gonna highlight everybody. And they'll be tagged in this video. Leave a comment down below and we'll tag the ones that you mentioned so that it can kind of grow. They could use this hopefully in their live streams. They could use it as discussion, post it on their Facebooks. 
so that they don't have to come out and say it and say like, hey, look at me. I'm saying it for them. Go look at them. And when you do go check them out, tell them I sent you. Now it's time to come to those myths. I catch so many as my, myself and currently my subscriber rate is less than 350 at the time of this, uh, making this video. And it just mind boggles me that people think so many different things about even a small, small channel like this. So I'm sure that they're catching even flack for this. The first one is that YouTube pays pretty well. And um, it really doesn't for small creators. It doesn't pay me at all. That's one thing, <laughs> get that right off the bat. You know, some people will think that because they see an ad on my video that I'm getting paid for that ad, not getting paid for it. And have you ever clicked on an ad when you're watching a video? Probably not, right? So that even lessens the income from that person. Then on top of it, it's, I believe it could be anywhere, but depending on the ad, the personality, it could be anywhere between 23 cents to $3 for every 1000 views. So if you're making $3 max, probably on a thousand views, if you make one video that gets 10,000 views, that's 30 bucks. The hour long it took you to shoot that video, the four hours it took you to edit it, the two hours it took you to come up with a description, a thumbnail, all that. Uh, yeah, that doesn't really, uh, you know, pay all that well. Those memberships that those monetized channels charge seem like they're too crazy. Well, if you didn't know, we do pay taxes. No matter where you are, we, two things that happen are death and taxes. So depending on your local and your country, wherever you may live, first of all, YouTube takes 30%. And then let's say overall between your local and your, your country's government, they take 20%. That's 50% of that membership fee is gone already. So a $3 membership fee is only gonna break that uh, content creator in $1.50. You're saying already, like, what makes it worth it? Company sends you gear for free. Sometimes that's actually kind of true, but 99% of that time, the stuff that you see being reviewed by most channels, they're paying for that. And then they might be selling it on reverb if they can. Right now, the economy is kind of bad, no matter where you are, that the going rate for an $89 guitar, even if it's a budget guitar, probably not gonna get $20, $20 for that on, re on reverb. It's almost worth it to just give it to a local school after music program or keep it for yourself just as a knock around uh, guitar. The companies that do send a channel like me have faith and are also trying to promote that channel and help them grow because they understand where we come from. But because you don't want to hit that subscribe button because YouTube is showing you what you want to see. Uh, most companies actually use subscriber count as a metric for giving products out to people. I just want to clarify too, I'm not saying to go out there and blanketly subscribe to people. We definitely need to earn you to hit that subscribe button. And we also owe it to you to keep you wanting to be subscribed. But there definitely are a lot of people that tune in on a regular basis and they just don't do that. And that could be anywhere between 5,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers. So when you think about it, that person that's only at 3,500 isn't ever really going to make it to that 5,000 mark to get to that next level of gear that you might want to review. And this goes for somebody that's at 400,000 subscribers. They might be getting, you know, mid-level amps, but if you want to see like some serious high gain monster, they need to be at that 500, 7,500, you know, I don't know what the levels are for some of these companies. Some of these companies don't even do anymore because they've gotten into the game of doing reviews. So they know that, you know, they don't need to even send their stuff out anymore. If a content creator doesn't create a flashy thumbnail, then they just don't care. And that's complete hogwash. Some people just leave it up to that YouTube uh, 
algorithm to choose the particular part of the video where it may look good for the thumbnail. And it just looks like it's a down to earth type of review. But if you're not clicking on a channel because the person, you know, doesn't have flashy thumbnail skills, but has great content, you might not see that because that's not what YouTube is pushing to you because it's not gonna look good on a uh, home screen. So I really encourage you to hit that subscribe button to whatever creators that you are watching on a regular basis. It may even show you some more things on your homepage because now it's linking you to other viewers that view other things and it might broaden your horizons a little bit. It will also give them a sense of accomplishment and will hopefully let them attain that next level of actually getting some quality gear to review. And let's say this, you hit that subscribe button and then you like the, don't like the next video that comes out. Don't unsubscribe right away. They all can't be gems. If you think that like, you know, the 10 in a row you don't like, then bounce out if you want to and then say that I was full of it. But, but your YouTube experience really kind of relies on this. And if you want to see these creators advance and go further, they really need that subscriber count. And other niches, other types of programming, they might not have to rely on that because they have viral stuff like the Hawk 2 girl or whatever, and they could put that in their video and it gets them a million views and they don't care if they have 100 subscribers or not. And I offer this again to any of the content creators I mentioned, didn't mention, use this in your live streams, post it to your Facebook, get the word out there. I said it, so you don't have to say it. And I apologize for the ones that I didn't mention because there's so many out there. There's so many that I'm subscribed to. You get insert your name here. You've all been a fantastic audience. And as always, stay tuned.